Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. What a wonderful day it is to be in the house of God, to sing praises unto our Heavenly Father God, not only to sing praises, but to worship Him this Sunday morning. Amen, somebody? The Word of God clearly tells us in the book of Psalms, let us give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good and his mercy endureth forever we are so grateful to god on this fifth sunday to be in this house on today the last sunday in october to praise the name of our god amen we have our wonderful associate reverend henry pullum who's going to bless us with a word from god on today i pray that you would pray with him pray for him as god speak through him today our ensemble is getting ready to give us a selection. Following that selection, uh, we will be blessed with a devotion from our deacons. Then our choir will bless us again. Amen. Sing along with us. Sing along with them as they help us usher in the spirit of the living God this Sunday morning.
Good morning. Today's scripture will come from the 46 and 100 numbers of Psalms, verses 1 through 5. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, shall I. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. And for this reason, we should praise the Lord. Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his word. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We come today for this prayer. May we bow our heads. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for another day. You woke us up this morning, clothed in our right mind. You didn't have to, dear Lord, but you did. And all we have to do is say thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless our church, bless our church members, bless our community, bless our friends and family. Lord, we ask you to continue to guide our steps in the path you would have us to go. Lord, we ask a special blessing for our pastor and his family. Dear Lord, we show appreciation for him, and dear Lord, we say appreciation for our church. Dear Lord, continue to bless our city our community, our state, our nation, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we know that everything is ultimately in the hands of the Lord. Dear Lord, we ask you to continue to watch your words as we go through this virus. We know that everything, everything will be in the hands of the Lord. Dear Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know that you know. So we ask you to be with us, dear Lord. Continue. Continue to bless us, dear Lord, in a way that only you can. Dear Lord, bless our church members and our church staff. Dear Lord, they continue to work with our church to do the thing, do the things that are necessary to put our church upon high. And the Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Lord, we ask your continued blessings. Continue to bless us. Continue to guide our steps in the path you would have us to go. Dear Lord, we say thank you again. Thank you for all that you do. Continue to bless us. Bless those that are going through illnesses or those that have lost loved ones. Dear Lord, we know that everything is ultimately in the hands of the Lord. So we say thank you. Thank you for all that you do. We ask these continued blessings for everyone. These and other blessings we ask in your name. Amen.
brought me from uh, mighty long way. Mighty yeah. long way. Yeah. That's a personal testimony. Yes, he brought me yes, from a mighty, mighty, mighty long, long way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and all I have to do is say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Because you brought me thank you, Lord. from a mighty long thank way. Yeah, I don't even have to preach after that song. Uh, that's the best thing to do yourself. You brought me from a mighty long way. And I just want to say thank you. Amen. Boy, church don't change. Corona ain't stopping nothing. Amen. First, give an honor to God, yes, who is the author and the finisher of yes. my faith. All right now, all right. To my very fine pastor, Amen. To Dr. Willie Tobias and my yes, first lady, Amen. Tobias. Amen. To the parking lot guests and internet, and you that are in the sanctuary. Family, friends, I just want to say thank you. For he has brought me a mighty long way. Yes, yes. This morning, I pray that we all are continuing to uh, practice safe measures because Corona is not yet over. Amen. That we continue to wear masks and sanitize our hands and Amen. keep social distances. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, out whether shall I go? This morning, I come to you with more word than I have time. Yes. Uh, just because the epidemic has come in, it has not changed things about the word of God. Amen. And so I'm not going to hold you long. I've seen pastor many times on the internet, and I said, I wonder if I could just cut it off like that sometime, but I don't think I can. So. Before I get too far, well, well, well. Uh, let me uh, get started. If you would, this morning, I pray that you would, if you have your Bibles, that you would turn with me to the book of John, chapter 11, verse 43. That's if you have your Bibles. I know most of us here have our Bibles because we are truly people of God. We can go nowhere without our word and when we don't have it, we have it in us. If you have your Bibles, you'll see in the book of John, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 43rd verse, I'll be reading from the King James Version. And if you, if you have it, you'll see these words. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bounded hands and feet, foot with grave clothes, and his face was bounded about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him, let him go. Loose him and let him go. With the time I have left this morning, I would like to articulate the exegesis of the simplicity of this particular text. Amen. In the book of John, there's a lot going on. The 11th chapter, 
there's a lot more than I can bring out in just one sermon, but what I would like to do today is bring out three basic points. And I'm not going to hold you long, but we're gonna start this together and we're gonna end it together. There are three points that I'd like to bring out to you and hoping for you that something in this message will be something that will encourage you yes. or something you may be able to use. Amen? Amen. Y'all say amen. Now, your mask don't stop amen. you from saying amen. amen. Uh, your mouth still work. Amen, somebody? Amen. amen. What I'd like to do is, I'm going to tell you a short story. I'm going to begin with the verse 11, and we're going to get to uh, verse 43 to 44. For 45 together. Amen? You brought me a mighty long way. But what I'd like to use for a subject this morning is loose me. Yes, yes, yes. What I'll use is loose me. Yeah. Somebody ought to just say loose me. Loose me. Because to tell it there's something holding on to you that holding you from praising God like you're supposed to. Yeah. Well, and well, you need to say loose me. Uh, there's some things in your life that you just can't get seem to get rid of and you just need God to loose you yeah. Yeah. from it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Uh, let me let me start here in the eleventh verse. I'm going to be above myself with very little time, but the 11th verse says, these things said he, and after that, he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awaken him out of sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen? Well, yeah, yeah. Jesus is talking to his disciples, talking about his friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But most of us think that Lazarus is physically asleep, but Lazarus is dead. Amen. Well, you say, how do you know that, preacher? Uh, because when you go down to the 14th verse, here it says, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. See, sometimes God has to break it down to where we can understand just what he is saying. All right, All right somebody? Yeah. What I want to do, I want you to think about this morning that we all have aborted a flight. I don't know how many of you have not flown before, but we are all in a flight this morning. We are in New Mount Zion International Highway, and we're about to take off and everybody has a first class seat. And the entertainment will be the Holy Spirit. I am your co pilot, and Jesus is the pilot. Y'all got to talk to me this morning. Loose me. Yes, yes, yes. Loose me. There is a word that that describes God in a way that some people never think about. Yeah, yeah. That word is omniscience. God is omniscience. Uh, you want to know what that means? Yes, sir. Uh, that means that God knows everything. Yes. There is nothing that you can do or have done that God don't know about. There's nothing that you're going through today that God don't know about. There's nothing that you're going to go through that God don't know about because God is omniscience. But not only is God only uh, omniscience, he is omnipresent. Well, well, well. Omnipresent means that God is everywhere. Amen. Amen. Somebody talk to me. Yeah, we serve a God that not only knows everything, 
but he is everywhere. Amen. That's why the Bible says, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. He is an on-time God. Yes, he is. He knows all, and he is everywhere. Yes. To say that, I said that because here in the 11th verse, God tells the disciples that Lazarus is asleep, and he's going to wake him. But in the 14th verse, he says, Lazarus is dead. He's not there to the disciples, but he is there. Come on, somebody. Y'all, somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. They might have got on this side. He is everywhere, and he knows everything. That's why he's omniscience and omnipresent. It comes and brings me to my first point. He's on time God. One of my favorite gospel singers is Miss Dottie People. Miss Dottie People sings a song. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Just to give you a few words, and I'm not going to sing because I step out of my character when I do that. <laughs> a few of the words says, He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Job said, He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Amen. He's on time. Yes, he is. He is an on-time God because God says to his disciples, I must go that I may break, that I may break, wake Lazarus from the dead. He already knew that he had died, but because he is an omniscience, and an omnipresent, an omnipresent God, he's going to do what no one can do. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. That's why God, when he shows up in our life, he does things that no one can do. Yes. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. Yes, he is an on-time God. God. Here, a little bit in, further into the scripture, when I bring out this point, we get to where Martha, Lazarus has two sisters, Mary and Martha. The Bible says that Martha goes out and has a conversation with Jesus. And sometimes it's good to go talk to Jesus just for yourself. Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. Yeah, she said, I can't sit here and hold it. I need to go talk to the man for myself. Yes. The Bible says, Martha says unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother wouldn't be dead. Uh, but I'm here to tell somebody he's an on-time God. He's an on-time God. But it is amazing that when people, when trouble happens, people have the tendency to dishonor and question God. Well, well, well. They seem to come up with the questions why me, God? Yes, yes. Where are you, God? Yes, Lord. Have you forgotten me, Lord? But I'm here to tell you, if you have that question this morning, I want you to know he is an on-time God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There will be no snacks on this flight because you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit in just a moment. Yeah, I called a few witnesses to prove to you that he's on time this morning. I asked Abraham and Sarah, and they said he's an on time God because he'll deliver when he said he will. I talked to Joseph and Joseph said, he is an on time God because he Believes in a man that dreams dreams. Uh, but nevertheless, the children of Israel says he's on time because when you're in bondage, hungry, or trapped by the sea, he's an on time God. <laughs> he's an on time God this morning. 
somebody. But that didn't stop right there. Uh, David said, he's an on time God when you're against your giants. Daniel says, he's an on time God in the lion's den. The woman with the issue of blood says, after all I spent my money, but I heard Jesus was coming. He's an on time God this morning. I'm here to tell you, he's omniscience. He's omnipresent, but he's also an on-time God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? Yeah. Yes, he's on time. I know he's on time. I know somebody sitting out there this morning feel like I do. When the rent was due, he was on time. When no food was on the table, he was on time. When the doctor stepped in the hospital room and said, I've done all I can do. He says, I'm on time. Yes, when the judge was about to render his verdict, yeah. he says, I'm on time. Yeah. He's a mother and a father to the mothers and the fathers. He is on time. Yes. He is an on time God. Yes, 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 yes. Amen? Amen? Yes. Now you're at 28,000 feet. Ain't no coming down. Because you're serving a God who is an on time God. <laughs> yes, Lord, he's on time. He's on time. Woo, Lord, he's on time. I know something just went through you then because when you think about it, something happened he, and God was on time. <laughs> Somebody was saying something to you and all before you know it, here go Jesus shows up. He was on time. Yes, 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 yes. It may not come when you want it. Yes, we look for it to be microwave, but it ain't. It has to stay in the oven for a little while. So when he gets there, it'll be well done. Because he's on time. Yes, he is. He's an on time God. Yes, he, he's on time. Yes, uh, help me, Lord. He's on time. Yes, I, I'm just a personal thing. He's on time. Yes, God is on time. That's just something that's just keeping me. He's never late. He don't look at the call ID. He's on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. We go on down in the, a little bit further, and there's so much material in this one chapter uh, that I can't not just pull it all out in one preaching. And so I'm trying to narrow it down to just giving you a taste of what it tastes like. I want you to be able to know that when you get off the flight, you've flown somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, know, know that you flew first class. Yes, yes, yes. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Here Martha still is having a conversation with Jesus. She goes in another verse and she's already told Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would be alive. And Jesus talks back to Martha, but then the conversation twists because now Jesus tells Martha, he says unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm, Martha said, yeah, I know my brother will rise again, Jesus, but it will be in the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Yes, I, I am the resurrection. Yes. In the 23rd, no, in the 25th verse, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Yes. I am. Which brings me to my second point. I am. 
I am. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody got that. Somebody got yeah. it. Amen. I am. Yeah. In the book of Exodus, Moses says unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your father has sent me unto you. And they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say? God responded back. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. What? God says that I am. Not only do I know everything, not only am I everywhere, not only am I on time, but I am. Okay. I am what? Glad you asked that question. God said I'm peace on troubled water. Yeah. 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 I am. See, I'm, I'm calmness in the midst of a storm. Yeah. I am. Yeah. The book of John 6, 35 said, I am the bread of life. Yeah. Yeah. I am. John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. I am. John 10 and 9 says, I am the door that if you open me, I am. I am just whatever you need me to be. I am just whatever you need. I am this morning. But he goes on in the book of John 10 and 11 says, I am the good shepherd. Talk to me, somebody. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, I am. I am divine that you that are connected to me may feel the flow of my spirit. I am. Yes, I am. I am just whatever you need me to be. But Revelation tops it off. Revelation says, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I'm the beginning of where your problem starts, and I'm the end that solves your problem. I am. I am whatever you're going through this morning. I am. I am whatever you are about to go through. I am. I am whatever you need me to be. I am. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for being I am in my life. Yes, yes, yes. yes, Lord. He's on time, God. He's I am God. Uh, but in the third and final point of my message, loose me. Loose me. Yes, loose me. Now that I know that you are everywhere. Now that I know that you know everything. Now that I know that you will be on time. Now that I know that you are I am. I need you to loose me. Yeah. Loose me. I notice in three things happen from verse 39 to 34. Jesus asks stone to be rolled away. Yeah. Yeah. Secondly, Jesus called Lazarus from the grave. Yeah. But thirdly, he says, loose me. Yeah. Loose him yeah. and let him go. Yeah. It is amazing that even though Lazarus was in the tomb, and when he came from the tomb, he was still bounded from what he was in there for. Hmm. Somebody didn't get that. Sometimes when we are locked up in with our sins, when even though God calls us out, 
we are still bounded by something. And we need Jesus to loose us. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, feel, I'm feeling to be loose this morning. Uh, yes, Lord. Talk to me, Jesus. Sometime, we will, now when he described the stone, he said they rolled the stone away. Yeah, <coughs> uh, yeah they, they rolled it away because if you think about it, some of the things in your life that you walk away, yeah. you will stop at. Yeah. But when you roll it, it's going to keep on rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody got that? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So we need to understand sometimes we just need to roll things away. Yeah. Yeah. But even though Lazarus came out of the tomb, the Bible says he comes out of the tomb, and in those days, they did not embalm or dress you. What they did is they wrapped you in linen and anointed you with oils and perfume. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you were bounded by whatever you laid there in. Mm -hmm. Now, here is Lazarus in the tomb. Well, well. And Jesus has commanded them to roll away the stone. But not only has he asked them to roll away the stone, he has commanded Lazarus to come forth. Yeah. Then when Lazarus come out, now he is in, in the clothes that he went in with. And now God has got to loose him from whatever has him bound. Yes, 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 yes. 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 When, we, when we are so bounded by things in our grave or in our sins, we need Jesus to loose us. Yeah. 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 Simply loosen us means to give us freedom and movement to praise and worship God. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we're just so bounded by our situation that we can't even say amen. Yeah, yeah. I know it. I know the feeling. I've been there. And sometimes you don't even want to clap your hands because what you are bounded by, you don't even want to clap your hands. Uh, but I'm here to tell you this morning, if you want to be free, just say, loose me. <laughs> loose me. Because power, God has the power to free you. Yes, yes, yes. Loose me. Yes. They rolled away the stone. Lazarus come forth. They didn't say that he walked out. They said that he came forth. You got to understand because he was already bounded by what they put him in. But when he got out, God said, you got to let him go. That's what he's saying to us this morning. We got to be loose from what we're bounded by because he needs us to understand he is God. And he is God all by himself. Yes, yes, yes. He is on time, God. He is an I am God. But he is God. Loose him and let him go. Sometime we need to understand that whatever it is, we need to say, loose me. Don't be afraid this morning. If, 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 you're, if something holy this morning, say, just, just loose me. Loose me from my worrying, God. Loose me from jealousy. Loose me from heartache. Loose me from lying. Loose me from drugs. Cancer, loose me this morning. COVID, loose me from COVID. Loose me from blood pressure. Loose me from smoking. Loose me from grieving, but just loose me, Lord, because I need to be loose. Yes, he's an on-time God. He is omniscient and omnipresent, but he's on time. He has the power to do everything. This morning, if we've just put our trust in God, there ain't nothing God can't do. Sometimes we need to just say, loose, loose me, God, for our family. 
Some people need to just be loose from their children. Yes. Some of us need to be loose just from people at work. Yes. But we need to be loose this morning. Yes. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus can loose you. Amen. Yes. Yes, Jesus can loose you. But if you want to be truly frank about it and truthful, some of us need to just be loose from self. Hello, somebody. During the clock sings a song, Deliver Me. Because sometimes I think too much into myself, she said, and I need to be loose. <laughs> yeah, I need to be loose. This morning I come in a little bound. I, my foot was trying to bother me and my throat was trying to bother me. And I told Pastor I felt nervous and didn't know which way I was going to go. But then God said, I'm, I'm everywhere. I know everything. You said, loose me. I'm going to loose you this morning. Yes. I thank you for loosing me, Lord. Yeah, I thank you for thank loosing you, me this morning. Yeah. Because if it had not been for God on my side, I don't know where I'd be this morning. Yeah, loose me. Yeah, somebody's going to fill the hot power with the Holy Spirit in a minute. Loosen something in your life. Loose me. Loose me. Yes, Lord, loose me and let me go. Yes, Lord, I think about the story, and many of us have heard it over and over again, that they put Jesus up on the cross. Well, 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 yes. Well. Strung his hands wide. Yes. Yes. And even the cross couldn't hold him on the hill. They had to loose him yes. up off of the cross. Yes. But then, not only that, when they took him down, they put him into a tomb. Yes. Yes. Then they said, the Bible says on Friday night, they thought all hope was yeah. gone. Yeah. On Saturday night, the devil had a part and said, it's all over. Yeah. But some surprising thing on early Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Early, yeah. early, early one Sunday yeah. morning. Yeah. Say he woke up with all power. All power. All all power in his hands. Nothing can hold him down. Nothing can hold you down. All you got to do is believe and trust in God and know that he'll lose you because he's an on time God. Yes, he's on time. 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 He's on time, somebody. He's on time. I'm telling you, he's on time. Yes, he's on time. He's on time. I know he's on time. I've seen him work in my life. I know what God can do. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He might not come when you want him, but he'll be right on time. Yes. Loose me, Lord. Loose me. Yes, Lord. Lord, I tell you, I thank you so much for allowing me to share with you this morning. I thank my pastor. When you trust in me to be able to stand before people. Yes, yes. I thank you all for your support and love. I've never felt nothing but love out of this congregation since I've been here. Yes. I tell you, I love you all so much, and I truly miss you all. But God has kept me connected because I truly believe that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I just thank you so very much. And I pray that something was said. 
something was heard that may make an, some type of point My in God. your life. In Jesus' name, I ask you to pray for me. Amen. 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 What a word from God this morning. Come on and celebrate. Reverend Pullum for doing it. That's all you can do better than that. Celebrate this preacher who has reminded us that all of us need to be loose by something. Come on, celebrate God this Sunday morning. Thank God for Reverend Pullum who has blessed us with an awesome word from God this Sunday morning. Stay in the doors of the church open as we prepare to dismiss this Sunday morning. We're going to close with, I will trust in the Lord until I die. Thank God from this preacher, this word from God this morning. Anybody need to be loose from something? We all have something that is holding us, wrapping us, keeping us from getting where God wants to be. Stand if you will. We're getting ready to have our closing prayer this Sunday morning. What a word from God. My God. Remind all of our youth and young people we have something for you in the back of the church. So please stop by, keep your mask on as we prepare to fellowship and celebrate who God is this Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. I will trust in, come on sing it this Sunday. I will trust in. Oh, I will trust in the Lord till I die. Come on, let me hear Oh, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. I will trust, come on, let me hear you. Mm -hmm. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the oh, Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. Do we have one who wants to unite? Oh, I will with the new Mount Zion church family. We'll trust in Oh, I will trust in One more time and then we're going to have a word of prayer. I will trust in the Lord. Oh, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust Lord, I will trust in the Lord till I die. Oh, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Oh, I will trust in the Lord until I Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for the example in scripture, God, reminding us that you can cause us to come back from any situation. You are the only one who can cause a resurrection. Why? Because you are on time. You are, you are, you are God who's able to loose us and let us go and be on our way. Now, God, we thank you for the preacher. The God man who has spoken your word on today, God, we pray strength. We pray a special anointing over his life, continue to empower and impact him so that he can continue preaching your word. Then, God, we thank you for all of those who have participated in our worship experience on today. Allow your word to continue to fall on good ground so that we know that you are the great I am. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion, 
of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with this thou people now, henceforth, and forever, that all God's people say amen, amen, amen. One more time, and we're going to leave. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust.